Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, I'm going to be going over some devlog stuff that I've been working on. I added this wet sand thing. I decided to redo my landscape and just add some world partitioning. So if you don't know what that means, you can go to tool, convert level, and then you can select your level to basically partition the world. So under landscape, I have this landscape region with landscape streaming proxies, which is pretty much just going to load certain things as my character goes near it. So for example, when I hit play and I walk around and if I leave my character, you're going to see that things are only loaded that's around me. So if I were to step a little forward, these rocks would load and then these would load and so on while you can see them unloading over here. And this is just some performance optimization stuff that I've been working on. And it's currently working for all the static meshes that I placed in my scene. After I go to this section, and unload that, everything falls apart, including the trees and stuff. But if I were to just go back, the only thing that falls is my character, but that's just because um, it's simulating physics and it kind of falls down. And then I also added this wet sand material. I just copy pasted it. And then I added this multiplier with a darker color and just try to look for a very wet sand look. And now I'm just redesigning some of the stuff, just double checking if everything looks good. And yeah, still currently looking for houses. I think this is the water that I'm going to stick with. It is a bit intensive, so I am going to change some things on it to make it more, uh, I guess, mobile friendly because I'm not going to really be by the water unless I'm on the edge of the map. And I'm only going to load this um, in four planes because this is one giant square. It's loaded even if I'm in the middle of the map, as you can see here. So I'm just going to have to cut them up and have them go around my island. And in the outliner, you're also going to see this under landscape. There's a bunch of stuff under it. So it's the streaming proxies. So for example, if I were to select the first one, it's just going to select like a certain component of my landscape and it'll only load as I get near it. And I just go to world settings and it automatically made me this, these main layers and partition layers. And I just set the distance to something like 1600 and 2000 for the loading range, only because from a top down view, you're not going to really, from a top down view, you're not really going to be able to see much anyways. And maybe a few times the camera will come like this or something. Maybe during cinematics, I'll add some transitions because the game does look really good as a third person close up game. It doesn't have to. Not everything's just built strictly for top down in this case. But yeah, super cute characters. And I can't wait to show more of what I have. Oh, also a quick uh, optimization tip. If you want your foliage to load in a certain distance, all you need to do is go over to your foliage, select that foliage and scroll down and you'll see something called call distance. And this is pretty much going to be where the distance where the instance begins to fade out. So I just set mine to 2000 and when I'm 2000 units away, these trees will unload because I selected it for this palm tree component or palm tree foliage. And another thing I've been doing is since I don't have tileable meshes and I'm kind of making a grid with them on the landscape. It is a nightmare, but you can use the flatten tool and then you can check under tool settings. You can check this flatten target and I'm pretty much just going, I'm starting at 100, which is the lowest point of my game, which is going to be my beach. Zero is going to be for the water, which is going to be around down here. And just to get that wavy type motion against the shore, I just smoothed it out. I'm going to add a box so players can't really go into the water just yet, or actually they won't be able to go into the ocean at all because it goes to nowhere and then i pretty much just going up 200 at a time so up here is 300 and then up here is going to be 500 yeah 500 just like that and this is just going to kind of give me levels in my game and i just set the tool strength to one that's really important if you want to flatten things out evenly and then after i do so i usually just create a ramp from for example this since over here it's 100 over here is 300 if i just create a ramp and hit enter on my keyboard, it will automatically create this ramp for me. And then I have to do something to tell the player that this is the ramp. So I usually just add these rock pathways on the side to make it a bit more game friendly and guiding the player on where to go. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. Thanks for watching.